So a couple things I want to talk about. Um, first and foremost, I want to talk about hustle. And no better example of hustle than what just happened. Right? We had a situation. It didn't totally work out. We improvised and changed the game and we're still able to deliver to the community. This is something I do all the time with Wine Library as a retail company. When a lady opened, ordered a case of Behringer White Zinfandel in December two years ago in Westchester and FedEx fucked it up and she called the store complaining that we were gonna ruin her Christmas because she didn't have her Behringer White Zinfandel during a hailstorm when while everybody was in chaos trying to figure out what to do, I just grabbed the case and drove to her house. That's caring about your community. This tonight, instead of saying, ah, oh, fuck it, nobody paid for tickets tonight. It's not like anybody really lost anything. Nashua and I were upset. We wanted to come through. We didn't want people to schlep over here today and just for a meetup, that's not what was presented to you. So we went fucking outside and now we're gonna crush a keynote for you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what I, what, one of the things that's going through my mind. A lot of people are talking about the economy, how it blows, how it, it sucks, how people are scared, people aren't spending cash, all that bullshit. Fundamentally to me, what's gonna happen over the next 24 months is going to be the biggest opportunity in our space created. I'm gonna tell you why. Social media, or whatever the fuck you wanna call it, is mature. It's, it's still a baby, but it's more mature than people realize. It's definitely a baby, but it's mature. Like a baby with a mustache, right? <laughs> so, what you have to understand is this. Major companies, a lot of companies, are not going to spend money in social media right now. They're scared, they're cutting, and the first thing they're gonna cut is things they don't understand. And so they're gonna cut some social media opportunities, which is gonna hurt some of your businesses because your business is built on advertising. I understand. However, what you need to understand is the fact that these major corporations, that they're not jumping into this space head first is the single biggest opportunity for you, whether you're a content provider, whether you're looking to monetize, whether you're a middleman trying to broker deals, the longer the people that already have established relationships in the market stay away from this zone, from this kind of product, the more opportunity you have in gaining brand equity. Had the Wine Spectator or Robert Parker or the Wall Street Journal jumped into online video when I did, there's a very good chance that I wouldn't have not had the ability to gain all the momentum I did with all the wine people in the space. But because they kept to the sidelines, that allowed me to grow bigger, stronger, and more powerful. It's kind of like Yelp. How many people here in this crowd know what Yelp is? Raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Yelp in a 36 month period has substantially dent and hurt the Zagat brand. How many people here know what Zagat is? Raise your hand. Zagat now is playing catch up. A 25 year old business, 50, 60 million dollar business, playing catch up. What you have to understand is that the internet fundamentally has changed the barrier of entry to compete with companies. The cost now to build a business is your time not your pocketbook. Because the gatekeepers, the newspaper, the radio, the producers, because they're not in control anymore. Because a clown like me can put a camera in his office in New Jersey, start drinking wine, and build brand equity, and nobody could stop me, nobody. That's a major, major shift in what's going on. Advertisers that are not coming to your space yet and are not getting it will come because advertisers are very simple. Brands are very simple. They go where eyeballs go, right? And the eyeballs, my friends, are shifting. As a matter of fact, I was in a taxi cab just now and I'm called the phone number. I want to buy ad revenue. I want to buy Wine Library TV episodes in the taxi cabs because that's a captive audience. You've got to start thinking differently. People are not watching television the way they used to. And on top of that, the way content is gonna be distributed through television has already changed. If you don't see what's going on with Apple TV and what's gonna happen with this TiVo, Netflix deal, and what's going on with Vios and Time Warner, Comcast, in 24 months, you're gonna go to channel 999 on Comcast and search any content you want on the internet and watch it in your television. And that's when shit changes.
That's when content will change and you'll be able to monetize. The problem is, is everybody that's standing here right now and all the people I speak to all the time and talk to on a everyday basis have the same fundamental fucking flaw. They're not patient. Everybody here wants shit to happen now. Shit's not gonna happen now. So what you need to do is take advantage and hustle and build equity and build opportunity. How many people here own their name.com? Raise your hand. I don't know what do you mean by own. GaryVaynerchuk.com. Raise your hand if you own that for your name.com. Should I go out and do it? If you don't, that is a massive mistake. Okay. Go and find it. If you're Jim and if, Smith, you're fucked. But I mean, if you're Jim Smith, you're fucked. Gary Vaynerchuk finally paid off. <laughs> To me, I'm fucking pumped. I'm pumped because so much good shit's about to happen and everybody in our space is crying that Main Street doesn't get us. You're spending all your time trying to convince your friends to sign up on Twitter and tell them why it's important, why it works. That is the biggest waste of fucking time on earth. Who gives a shit if they don't know about Twitter or if a company doesn't? That should be your motherfucking secret. That's your secret. Keep killing that. I didn't go around telling people, oh, this is what I'm doing. This When I launched winelibrary.com in 1997, every wine store in America was making fun of me because they thought the only things I was selling online were Opus One and Silver Oak and all these hard to get items. Because why would Sally on 53rd ever go to winelibrary.com and pick up Santa Margarita when she could pick it up next door? But what I realized then, because I got in the orders, was people like convenience, word of mouth. Everything's different. Culture different people are different and so that's the same thing everybody's gonna use Twitter whether Twitter is Facebook or whether Twitter is Friendster and there's gonna be another product that comes out tweaks that does it slightly better the general concept of tweeting out and all that shit or texting on a big level is here to stay it's going nowhere just look at the early adapters how addicted to it and how often they use it all right a couple other things Stop crying. There's so many people crying about something, making fun of somebody else, thinking things suck, worried about this. There is so much fundamental opportunity. If you're trying to make a business model, let me tell you what you need to do. Whatever your niche is, whatever your subject matter is, go out and take your money. And here's what I mean by that. If you've got a niche website, you've got to go to Google how many people here have heard of Google? <laughs> you've gotta to go to Google and you've gotta type in the name or the keywords in your space. For me, that would be wine, and then it would be Cabernet, Chateau Margaux, things like that. Any company that has a box on the right side spends money. Click that fucking ad, find the phone number, and call them and convince those people why your traffic that is so focused and on point to that subject matter is more valuable to them than buying a fucking stupid Yellow Pages ad. It's there. You just got to take it. There's so much opportunity. The time is now. Anybody who looks at a 17, how many people here have a brother or sister or somebody they're very close to that is at the age of 14 to 18? Raise your hand. Watch those fuckers. <laughs> they're the ones that are gonna tell you what's gonna happen. It is clear as day that they are not going to be watching television. And I promise you one thing, advertisers are not gonna be spending $80,000 for a full page ad in Sports Fucking Illustrated. There's no value in that. And they're realizing that and they're gonna shift and they're gonna put their money elsewhere. And no matter what you do, you need to position yourself to be in that. Whether you're a content provider or a middleman or doing the buying for a product and start talking about it. A lot of you work for companies. When I consult for companies, I get a lot of the same shit. Yeah, but I have a muzzle. I'm not allowed to tweet for my product. There's too much red tape. Whatever you do for your own brand, because if you don't say anything, then nobody knows you're thinking it. Communicate your thoughts on our space. Because when the people above you get fired because they suck and they didn't use this and they're gonna lose, make sure the new people coming in have some content that you saw it, you just couldn't make it happen. It's a huge thing for people to do on a corporate level.
but I really didn't want to talk that much. I want to do a lot of q and I'll stand here until there's no more questions left. Please ask me any question. If it's about social media, wine, the New York Jets, whatever you want, fire away. T-shirts is good too. Fire away. What's your favorite $5 wine? My favorite $5 wine is a wine called Borgato from Portugal. Borgato Afante. Five bones fucking crushes most $25 wines. Hey, Gary, so a lot of people are talking about... What's your name, sir? My name's Oz. Nice to meet you. A lot of people are talking about branded social applications being the next big thing in advertising. I think people have to understand what advertisers want. They want eyeballs. So I think anything that has eyeballs is monetizable. In my opinion, if you have 2,500 unique people a day coming to whatever you're doing, you should be making bank. You should be able to live off of that. I really fundamentally really? believe that. Yes, I know it sounds very low. 2,500 uniques a day to me is very monetizable. The problem is a lot of people, a lot of people don't position themselves to monetize. And that's, and that's what I, I get passionate about. Wow, that's what I talk to people about. If you don't position yourself, if you don't redesign your website, and most of all, if you don't go after people. I mean, for me, I did a case study for myself when I had about 4,000 uniques for my show and met with a very famous wine glass company and showed them all the numbers and da da da. Talked to them about what they did in the Wine Spectator for $70,000 a month and all this other bullshit. And at the end of the meeting, and I didn't want to take it because I'm, you know, I didn't take it because I've got other monetizing things going on and there was a lot of different discussions with television going on at the time, but at that point, he offered me $2,700 an episode. That's, you know, I do five episodes a day. I mean, that's real money. Now, that's because it's niche. Now again, you might talk about technology, a lot of you do. That's not as niche and that gets harder. That $2,500 might be tougher, so it is individual. But how many people here consider themselves, when they blog, they talk about, Social media, technology, that kind of whole space. Raise your I hands. Do. I do, a lot. Real high, I wanna see everybody who it is. Right. Every person that says, that has their hand in the air, if you're not leaving a, <laughs> if you're not leaving a seismic video reply to every TechCrunch post every single day, you are a clown. It is oh, a wow. massive, Matt and Center Networks, thank you. Sorry, my friend. But honestly, you know that? Mashable, sorry. But I'm, I, listen, I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I saw because that's where it was launched first, what I saw. These are places where you can build equity. The problem is people stay within their own cocoon. You need to go out and work the community. When Wine Library TV had no viewers, the way I got them was by leaving content on other wine blogs, even ones that were ranked 11 million on Alexa. Oh. You know what I mean? You, yes, you go to them all because you don't know where your opportunity is going to be. People look at numbers too much. Everybody gets caught up way too much in how many people are in their RSS or how many uniques they had in a day. You've got to, you've got to build. You've got to build. If you had the ear of all the top management at these brands, national brands, like Pepsi, like Von and Bell at Pepsi. I was one of the 25 that got that thing. Yep. Okay, so what would you say to them? What do you think is the most important thing they need to hear? They, don't, question. the question is, if, when, if I had the ear and when I do talk to some of them, these big brands, what would I tell them about the space? Is that right? The, the social media space. Oh, okay. So, here's their problem. Here's the problem for Green Mountain Coffee and for Pepsi and for Budweiser and the vodka brand I talked to yesterday. They don't think there's enough people, and they're right. The most followed person on Twitter is Obama, and he has what, 100,000 people following him? Obama. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so, so, right? They don't think there's enough people. What I convinced them is two things. One, they suck.
suck. They want to spend money, right? This space doesn't cost them money. It costs them time, which does have a money value, but not like the bullshit money they spend by like, who are those assholes that put that thing on that phone booth right there? You know how much that cost? A lot more than if you really cared about your community. So what I tell them is this. You need to immerse yourself in this space because a lot of the people in 2009 that do move the market are paying attention to this market and it's a trickle down and the cost is so minimal that there's no value in not yeah. doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what I tell them. Okay. Yeah. What do you say to the people that say that Twitter actually degrades the English language and Facebook is a way to uh, us Yep. Marketing and longer on right, I've so, never heard that. so I don't give a shit about the English language. Okay. <laughs> so that's first and foremost. Um, I, I think there's absolutely, I, there's no validity to that. I mean, not marketing in an effective way with the English language is the stupidest thing I've ever heard because most people know that it's visual, it's emotional, you know, it doesn't need to be spelled right to be right. Thank you, Gary. You're welcome. Gary. Yo. If you're marketing and come across in 140 characters, then you're doing something really amazing. That's basically the bottom line of Twitter. Guys, the problem is, is everybody thinks about marketing from like, what can I do to catch a splash? It's a game of nutrition. It's, it's a long process. You really have to give a fuck about your users. The people that win really care. They have a true community. And when that original fan base, like for example, my Vaniacs originally, they're the ones who build your brand equity. Whatever you do, you have to make sure your user is the happiest son of a bitch on earth because then you crush. Then they do it for you. you will never have the time. Everybody's always amazed by how much I do, but I'm only one person. It's not scalable. I try to make unscalable things. I made a Facebook app the day apps came out called Ask Gary. You ask me a wine question, I fucking answer it. That worked for about two days until I got 900 questions an hour. I mean, it's not scalable, but if you build passionate users and you really give a shit about them, then that's the marketing. The marketing is, see, what you have to understand is nothing's changed except word of mouth. Word of mouth is what's changed. The biggest fucking yenta on the Upper East Side 10 years ago could have told 60 people about your product. Now some clown in Ohio with a Twitter account can tell 4,000 people in one shot. Word of mouth has changed. And if your shit is on point and people are passionate about your product, that's what's gonna explode. They can keep it going forever, it's that tail. Yes? A business model not reliant on content, but is a business model. It's a platform in and of itself. Give me the example. Um, I'm in the process of building a platform that's called Democritus. Democritus. Basically, a customer service platform for government. So get satisfaction for government. Uh, with with IDA incubation that actually creates legislation. Okay. It's the same game. When you launch that product, it's an app. It's a web app. So the early users, you need to listen to them. So when they're like, oh, I don't like the submit button because it's pink, you listen to that shit, you know, or whatever it is. And then the other game is to outreach in, you know, I live on Huffington Post and shit like that, just building up your street cred, not spamming and linking your shit, just getting your name out there. When I left all those comments on those wine blogs, all it said was Gary Vaynerchuk. That's it. My name link back to my video blog, but I never left a link in a comment. Now, a lot of people who are in the SEO game think it's important. I don't. I think it hurts you. I think it shows what your intentions are. Instead of adding to the community, you're trying to suck out. What I would do is be a, you or somebody else be a face of this product, live and breathe every politic blog on the internet and build up that name equity and they see your quality responses and thoughts and then they click your name, they find your site and then when you get them into your house, you treat them like guests. Well, I think what you're saying One second. to me, right? You gotta raise your hand, sir. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, that's okay, you wait. Anna first. Savino, listen, Anna, uh, Gary, your tipping point. What, how can you define it, what was it? My, the question was, what was my tipping point? I have no idea. And I, I honestly- when, when did you like really realize, oh, it's working, I'm so psyched? The day before I started it. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. To me, if you're passionate about what you do and you love it more than life and you believe you know what you're right. doing, you've won already. 
the, the day I felt I had something, the first comment I got on my, on my blog, the first day. I mean, it was always going to work in my opinion. There was never a doubt. I believed in it that hardcore. I knew how hard I was gonna work for it. And uh, that's it. I, I don't believe in tipping points at all, I really don't. I'm sure there's always a moment. Was it when I was on Conan O'Brien or when the Wall Street Journal? I'm sure there's something. You know, being on Dignation, there's definitely things that made it go up. When Center Networks linked me up, Mashable talked about me, whatever it may be. But I'm not sure, but I know this, that I never looked for it. And way too many people look for their tipping point. And that goes back to not paying attention to your stats. Well, I just wanted to say, Mark Responder, that it looks to me like you spent a lot of sweat equity and time to build Always. this up. I mean, that's the, the commodity. Yeah, not the commodity, but this is the payment, right? If you don't work, time. you have no chance. Too many people, I mean, this takes every minute you've got, depending if this is what you want to do. It starts with, what do you want to do? If it's just dollars and cents, fuck that. You're not gonna win. You're not. If you don't have pure passion, then you've got no chance of victory. And so it's, it, got, it has to come down to what do you want? Always. Yes? TV, Jason Barrett, Social Media Consultant. Quick question. I bet a lot of, a lot of brands you talked about say, you know, there's not enough mass in social media to, to put dollars against it. My response to that to my clients is, yeah, but it's 1,000% targeted. There's literally no waste in social media because if you put yourself out there, everybody who interacts with you is by definition a fan of the brand or they wouldn't be there. So there's no wasted impressions the way it is with TV or radio or print or yellow pages or direct mail or anything else. How do you feel about that? I feel that the difference between a social media user today, and it'll change, but today as a consumer of a product compared to the non-social media consumer is that a social media consumer is an advocate. They continue the building process of the brand because they are using the tools like Facebook Share, like Twitter, like that, to continue the story about your brand. Let me follow up on that, Gary. So what you're saying though is, so then is, you advocate using social media more as a customer loyalty and retention tactic more so than a customer acquisition tactic. Yeah, both. I mean, it's like players, right? Everybody has players. Your basketball team, you have 12 players, but 12 of them might suck. You might have customers, but they might not be doing anything for your brand except a one-way, you know, one-way transaction. You know, I, I feel that people that are social media consumers are multiple traction and can create so much. I mean, listen, if I love your product and go and tweet about it and do a video blog about it, things are gonna happen. And there's a lot of people replicating like that on many different levels. You know what? I'll, let me let me finish with this before it rains too hard. But we can keep going. I don't give a fuck about one brand that doesn't get get it. Not for one fucking second. You know why? Because they're gonna fucking lose and be gone. I'm not in the business to protect Pepsi from dying off and letting some other brand come in and take it. Because if you don't think shit that changes when platforms change, just pay attention to the five biggest selling beers when radio was in existence and what happened in the first five years of television hitting some sort of critical mass. Because Schaefer and Paps Blue Ripon, I promise you, they would redo some shit. <laughs> so the landscape's gonna change. The next Red Bull and vitamin water and blah, blah, blah is gonna come from this space and they're gonna spend a hell of a lot less money than Red Bull and vitamin water did. Somebody's gonna crush it, build a fucking $100 million brand and do it for less than $500,000. And that's when people are gonna be like, oh. <laughs> Now I get it. Do you think the space is going to become saturated with people that don't want to spend any money and create great results? Yes. Uh, okay. And then the cream will rise to the top and they'll get money. It's going on right now. Okay. There's a fuckload of shit going on, but there's only a very small tier that makes money. Guess what? That's how it is out here too. It's always been that. It's always that. Always but everybody thinks that if they have a blog or their social media, they're going to get it and they're going to crush it. You've got to be good and you gotta work your ass off, it's the same principles that have always existed. If you suck at sports radio talk, nobody's gonna listen to your shit and you're not gonna be able to monetize. So make sure what you do is something you're passionate about and you're good at. Do you swear this much when you talk to Pepsi and those big brands? Never. Only when I get people. Do you tell them that they suck? Yes. Immediately. <laughs> Immediately. I, 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 have, I have nothing to lose. That's not what I do. I do, I do a lot of consulting, but it's not my main source of income. So for me to walk in, I 
I saw Tim Zagat at the founders meeting the other night and said, you're getting your face beat in. That's my opening line to him. And, and his friend, and he said to his friend Bernie from ABC who introduced me, he's like, I like this kid because I don't give a fuck if he's out of business tomorrow. I really don't. It's not my, it's not what I can do. It's, I don't have the time to help him, you know? What type of wine goes good with fish? <laughs> White. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for coming out. Awesome. Thank you for braving the elements. I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Gary.